Today, I'm going to review the book Immune, a journey into the mysterious system that keeps you alive. My name is Brandon Bieber. I'm a neuroimmunologist, a doctor who treats immunological diseases of the nervous system, such as multiple sclerosis. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'll tell you a crazy story about the immune system, or lack thereof, in my grandmother. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the author of the book, Philip Detmer, and explain how and why he wrote the book. I'm going to summarize some of the content from the book, and I'm going to read you a passage and tell you a few of the technical errors in the book and of course give you my overall review and whether or not you should read it. So Philip Detmer is the CEO of the YouTube channel Kurzgesagt, which means in a nutshell in German, and they make amazing videos explaining scientific phenomenon with excellent cartoons, professional narration, and review by experts to ensure accuracy of the content. Philip Detmer became interested in the immune system after he himself had a severe food allergy requiring him to seek medical treatment. He also had cancer requiring chemotherapy, and he wrote this book over several years, wrote, read several immunology textbooks, and the book was in part edited by Dr. James Gurney, a microbiologist, and Dr. Thomas Brocker, an immunologist, and I would say the author has a deep understanding of the immune system. And Kurtzkesacht is known for explaining complicated ideas in plain English, and Detmer has previously said that if something is too complicated, it's probably just not being explained well enough. So in the book, they avoid excessive technicalities and jargon and tell stories to explain the beautiful immune system. For example, I'll read you a quick passage. But the most mind-boggling thing neutrophils do in battle is to create deadly nets of DNA, sacrificing themselves in the process. To get an idea of what this means, imagine you were a burglar and wanted to break into a museum at night and let your buddies in to have a stealing stuff party. So you were doing a great job and sneak by cameras and security systems, entering the vaults where all the valuables are. Things are going great, you think, as you begin stuffing paintings into your backpack. But then suddenly, you see a guard charging at you, screaming. You get ready for a fight. But instead of swinging at you, the guard rips open his chest, splitting his ribs into countless sharp splinters while pulling out his intestines. You don't even have time to get confused before he starts swinging his guts, spiked with sharp bone splinters at you, like the world's most disgusting whip. You cry in pain and confusion as he mercilessly strikes you, causing deep wounds and leaving you stunned and unable to flee, and then he punches you in the face. So now I'll move on to the content of the book, explaining the different concepts of the immune system that are covered. He starts off very basic, explaining things like cells and proteins and DNA and blood vessels. So even someone with no background in biology whatsoever could probably follow this book fairly well. The immune system I always found to be very difficult to learn. It's kind of weird, obtuse, interconnected. It's amazing that it sort of functions unconsciously, but I think he give, does a pretty good job explaining it in plain English. To get you interested in the immune system, he tells stories of people acquiring infections. For instance, he starts off with a hiker who steps on a nail that pierces their shoe and causes a cut and introduces soil laden with bacteria who acquires a superficial bacterial infection and then he goes on to talk about the different immune cells which are activated. Later on he tells a story of someone contracting the flu. He starts off by talking about the innate immune system, the part of the immune system that you're born with that doesn't really evolve over time. These are cells like neutrophils and macrophages and dendritic cells and microglia within the central nervous system. Then he goes on to talk about the adaptive immune system, the part of your immune system that evolves over time, like the B and T lymphocytes. He explains the difference between helper T cells and killer T cells. He talks about the development of the immune system, organs like the spleen and the thymus, and he explains how immune cells learn not to attack the self through positive and negative selection. He talks a little bit about how the immune system generates the genetic diversity of immune cells. He doesn't use this term, but he explains VDJ recombination. Then he talks about antigen presentation. This is how the immune system recognizes a foreign protein or a portion of a foreign protein and presents it to the immune system through the major histocompatibility complex 1 and 2. He also explains the complement system, the complicated proteins in the blood which fight various infection. And he talks about natural killer cells, which are the cells in involved in fighting virus infected cells and cancer cells and also how they kill cells that do not exp express major histocompatibility complex 1. 
He also talks about the regulation of the immune system, how the immune system is toned down after an infection, and he talks about regulatory T cells. He also talks about passive immunity, after you get a snake bite, how antivenom works, and treatments like intravenous immunoglobin to treat people with immunodeficiencies or autoimmune diseases. He talks about how vaccination works, active immunity, and he mentions specific diseases, in particular HIV, measles, worms, and COVID-19. He talks a little bit about the hygiene hypothesis and how lack of exposure to parasites may be triggering autoimmune disease. He also explains allergies. Then he mentions immune boosting. How do you stimulate the immune system? And he really criticizes this practice and says it's not really evidence-based. He does talk about stress in the immune system. And finally, he talks about cancer. And it turns out the immune system is very important in controlling the growth of cancer and he talks about how cancers evolve to essentially escape the immune system and grow. I think overall Detmer does an excellent job making complicated things as simple as possible. For example, he uses a lot of anthropomorphic language and analogies just to give one example. He talks about major histocompatibility complex 2 holding on to a protein antigen and he compares it to a hot dog bun holding on to a hot dog just as one example. I would say the beginning of the book and the end of the book are pretty easy to understand. The middle of the book, a little bit technical, maybe a little bit difficult for someone with no background whatsoever, but still fairly readable to most people. And overall, I think this is a very good book, and I'll give the following reviews. So in terms of the quality of writing, I would say it's very, very good. I'm actually impressed that he could write this well in general. I would give it an 8 out of 10 in terms of writing. In terms of entertainment value, only a 5 out of 10. If you're looking for an easy, pleasant read, there are probably better nonfiction books out there. In terms in terms of informative value, I would give it a 9 out of 10. And in terms of scientific accuracy, I would give it a 9 out of 10. It's highly, highly accurate. That being said, I did catch the following errors. Number one, Detmer says correctly that the adaptive immune system doesn't function well at the time of birth and in early infancy and takes years to develop and see various antigens. And of course, breast milk can contain immunoglobins and offer some protection. This is true. However, he says it takes a few years for the adaptive immune system to function, which isn't really true. It turns out the nadir, or lowest point of immunoglobins in infants, occurs at four months and then starts going up, and the rate of certain serious bacterial infections starts going down soon after infancy. So it doesn't really take a few years to become effective, it just becomes more effective over time. Number two, Detmer tries to explain how immune cells know unconsciously to move to the site of infection, and he says that chemokines, or cell signaling proteins alter gene expression, which may be true to some extent, but there's a more direct mechanism of action where chemokines or the gradient of chemokines is sensed by cell membranes and that alters the actin or protein cytoskeleton within the cell, causing the cell to deform and beat and move through blood vessels. The complicated biomolecular signaling is shown in the diagram you're looking at. Number three, the book suggests that complement proteins may be more valuable against viruses than bacteria but this is very unlikely. It's well known that genetic complement deficiencies and drugs which block complement activity such as eculizumab used to treat neuromyelitis optica and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria are actually associated with infections by encapsulated bacteria such as Neisseria meningitidis, not viruses. Number four, Detmer claims that humans may be able to select sexual mates with a different major histocompatibility complex genetic makeup in order to achieve greater immunity immunological diversity based on the sense of smell. And I've heard this since I was in high school, but it's not true. There was a meta-analysis done on actual mate selection, and the correlation with major histocompatibility complex genes was a meager 0.44. Number five, the book describes that during an allergic attack, mast cell degranulation causes the release of histamine, causing blood vessels to contract. In reality, it causes them to dilate. Number six, the book tries to explain the pathogenesis of auto immune diseases, and it explains they could be caused by what's known as molecular mimicry. This is when your immune system sees a foreign antigen, such as on a virus, and creates an immune response that coincidentally targets similar antigens within your own body. And this may explain certain autoimmune diseases, such as Guillain-Barre syndrome, and may be part of the pathogenesis of other autoimmune diseases, but for diseases like multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis, it really is a very gross oversimplification. Okay, but take all this with a grain of salt for two reasons.
reasons. One, my overall impression of the book is that it's highly scientifically accurate, and also the people who edited this book know much, much more about the immune system than me. I really like this book. You should definitely buy and read it. One thing I'll say is this book on its own would not be enough for someone who is actually a medical professional or trying to learn immunology in a serious way. Although I appreciate that they try to avoid jargon and technicalities, you really do need to know the jargon if you actually want to be a medical professional. For instance, to interpret the laboratory values of someone with HIV, you have to know what the CD4 receptor is. To understand how ocrelizumab works, you have to know what CD20 is. So this would be a great book for a medical professional with supplementation from an actual immunology textbook. So finally, we get to the story of my grandmother. When she was a young woman, she suffered a cut on her finger and it got infected bad. It swole up and she woke up one morning and there was a dark streak going up her arm, phlebitis. Keep in mind, this is before antibiotics and infection, even a superficial bacterial infection could be quite serious, requiring amputation or even being life-threatening. She showed the problem to a friend who said, hey, you know, there's something brand new to town that could help you. It's called penicillin. So sure enough, she went to a doctor and who prescribed her penicillin, which cured her infection. Crazy to think that if it weren't for that, she might not be alive, and subsequently, I might not be alive. She went on to survive various other medical conditions and lived to age 99.